There are several key factors when it comes to the variations in the material being used for the drum head surface. The most obvious is the color. Is it clear film? Is it a black film? Is it a white film? Is it dyed? Is it different colors? Does it have a transparency to it or is it completely opaque? The next most common descriptor for the material being used is the thickness. We refer to this in mils or one thousandth of an inch. To be clear, this is different from millimeters. Millimeters are much larger than one mil. So often you'll hear the thickness referred to as a 10 mil or a seven mil or a 14 mil. And that's just referring to the thickness of a ply or a single piece of material. Now there's also multiple plies of material. In some cases you'll find a single ply or a two ply where there's two pieces of material both put together for a single surface of the drum head. And in actually some cases, there's even three ply. So three pieces of material put together that creates a lot more durability, but also restricts the sound in a unique way as well. In addition to these relatively obvious characteristics for the film, there are many more characteristics that aren't openly advertised. Specs such as the elongation of the material, how it stretches over the course of time, how does it do upon impact. Certain types of films are softer and will provide certain types of performance when it comes to how they're struck or even just how they resonate if they're being used on the bottom side of the drum rather than on the batter side. The manufacturers look through these specs and choose the films that they're using for their given drum heads carefully in order to provide the best user experience and also something that's going to align with the actual purpose of that drum head. When it comes to the polyester film, oftentimes you'll hear people refer to it as Mylar. Now Mylar is actually a brand name, just like Kleenex is actually a brand name, even though it's often used synonymously with tissue. So Mylar is really being used as a commonplace replacement for polyester film. But in fact, Mylar, true Mylar, is only made by one manufacturer, and that's DuPont. When it comes to the performance of the material, generally speaking, the thinner the material, the less force it's going to require in order to get it vibrating. It's simple physics. If you have a thicker piece of material, it's going to require more force to get it vibrating. This is why thicker single ply drum heads, such as a 12 mil variation or a 14 mil variation, and still just one single ply, often require heavier hitting. You don't necessarily want to take them to a light playing jazz gig because they're going to sound a little restricted. They might be a little bit more boxy and just not have the, the breathiness that you'd expect out of that particular drum head because you're not necessarily hitting it as hard. When you take multiple pieces of material and put them together, such as in a two ply or a three ply head, those pieces of material will actually inhibit each other to a certain degree. With a traditional two-ply head like a G2 or an Emperor, you won't find any kind of adhesive in the playing surface between those plies. There's nothing holding them together right in the center area. Those plies are actually kind of free to vibrate. The adhesive is actually all the way around the outside and is typically held inside the hoop. That's what's holding those two pieces of material together. By allowing the multiple pieces of material to vibrate relatively freely, you get a very specific sound. If both of the pieces of material are the exact same type, they will likely vibrate better in phase with each other. There will be less restriction. They'll behave in a very specific way. Now, if there are different types of films, opposing film types, such as, for example, the Evans Black Chrome, that has a clear seven mil on the top and then a black seven and a half mil. So we've got two completely different films, both in thickness and also their actual chemical makeup. Those are going to restrict each other in a different way, which is why you get such a deep, fat, punchy sound out of the Black Chrome series. Those two pieces of material are working together to actually self-equalize the sound that you're getting out of the drum. That means that you don't have to put any additional muffling on there to get that sound. Those two pieces of material are working in concert to create that very specific sound. 
Now when it comes to the surface of the drum head, we can't ignore what the actual texture is like. In some cases, there's a coating. In other cases, it's a type of material that has a natural texture to it. In the case of the J1 etched heads from Evans, those actually feature a sandblasted surface. It's a texture that's created by blasting media at the actual film, that material, in order to create a pitted texture. When it comes to the traditional coatings offered by most manufactured, they're sprayed on in various methods. In some cases, a spray nozzle is actually deploying the coating onto the surface of the drum head while the drum head is rotating around. In other cases, it's passing through a booth while spray nozzles apply an even amount of coating over the top. In the case of the Evans UV-1, the coating is actually applied via screen print, not all too dissimilar from how often a lot of t-shirt designs are applied onto a t-shirt. And then a UV light is used to actually cure that coating and solidify it so that it can't be scraped off. In other cases, such as the Evans Caftone, the actual surface material provides that texture. This fibrous material offers a certain degree of resistance, and so you can hear that texture, particularly with brushes. In addition to the variations in material being used for a given drum head, there are other elements that can contribute to the performance and the actual sound that you'll receive. Certain drum heads such as the Evans Genera and Genera HD snare drum heads and the Evans EQ bass drum heads also feature an overtone control flap or an additional piece of polyester film running around the perimeter of the drum head. And that's actually added in order to control the tonal response of the drum head. It applies pressure to the outer portion here, which actually attenuates those higher frequencies to create a more focused, deeper sound. In the case of the Evans dry variations of drum heads, there are vent holes around the outer portion here, actually drilled straight through the material in order to allow air to escape. This shortens the sustain of the drum head rather than modifying the tonal response. Other drum heads such as the Remo Pinstripe and the classic Evans Hydraulic feature material between the plies. And in the case of the Hydraulic, there's actually oil, a little bit of oil between those two pieces of material that restrict the motion of those two in order to create a much shorter sustain. By placing that oil between the plies, the motion of those two individual pieces of material is restricted to a certain degree, creating a much shorter sustain and a deeper, thuddier kind of sound. Another common approach to altering the sound of a drum head is to apply mass to the center. Now that's commonly done with some variation on a center dot either placed on the top side or on the bottom side of the drum head in order to lower the fundamental frequency. That slows down the vibration of the drum head, thus creating a lower frequency. And also, in the case of heads that feature it on the top side, provides additional durability. Subtle differences in design and choices in materials used can have a massive impact on the performance of that drum head. But it's important to remember that all of this is for naught if you don't know how to tune your drum heads and get the sound that you're looking for.